Each and every one of us will find ourselves in a situation where we are in extreme resistance to what is. When this occurs, it feels like we're at war with what is. There's a constant tension in our being. There's a constant attempt to make what is unbe and to make what has happened unhappen. We may resist and fight what is for years, yet fail to make it different than it is, and in the end, end up feeling desperate and also feeling completely stuck. But all this can be changed by doing one very difficult thing. Accept what needs to be accepted. When it feels like you are at war with what is, you are not accepting something. The question is, what are you not accepting? People often think that to accept something means to like something, to approve of something, to agree with it, to put up with it, to be easygoing about it, and or to tolerate it. But this is not actually acceptance. To accept something simply means that instead of pushing against something or pushing against the truth of it, you recognize it as real, valid, or true. When this happens, instead of resisting it, you let that reality sink in. The power is then in your hands regarding what to do about it. So let's say this another way. To accept something is to recognize what is real, valid, and true, and to recognize that you can't change the fact that it is real, valid, or true, and once that that reality has sunk in, it is in your hands to decide what to do about what is real, valid, and true. So that you can understand this better, here are two examples. Justin fell madly in love with Marin six years ago. They got married after knowing each other for six months, and they had two children back-to-back -back almost immediately once they were married. Marin acts as if she's miserable in their life together. She's almost always furious when he comes home from work. Often, Justin comes home to find that Marin has simply set the two kids in front of the TV for hours while she does the other things that she wants to do for herself. Things like flip through fashion magazines and talk to friends on the phone and even go out to the store, leaving their two toddlers unattended at home. One year, they had already been to the hospital three times come March. Let's look at these hospital visits. Once, it happened because one of the kids nearly drowned in a friend's pool. The other, it happened because that same kid ate an entire bottle of gummy vitamins. And the other time, it was because the other kid developed a very severe diaper rash. All of these injuries were because of Marin not keeping an eye on the kids and not really putting effort into parenting them. Because these three visits happened so close together, it caused the doctors to suspect neglect, so they in fact brought in a social worker to speak to the family. Justin is understandably furious. In fact, they fight all the time. He makes it known in all these fights that he thinks that Marin is not a good enough mother to the kids. He now calls to check up on them multiple times throughout the day, and she's started going to therapy. <sighs> What's the problem? The problem is, in therapy, Marin has realized that due to their religious upbringing, she simply had kids because it's what a woman should do when she gets married. She didn't actually want kids. She didn't even know it was an option not to. But when she explains this to Justin, he won't hear it. It doesn't matter if she doesn't want kids. She has them. She's a mom now, period, the end. It's her job to figure out how to be a good one. Justin goes to war with what is. He takes her to church enthusiastically every Sunday, hoping that she will see the light regarding the importance of motherhood. He enrolls her in parenting classes and buys her parenting books. He makes lists of all the things that she can do with the kids when he's gone at work. <laughs> he brings her to spend time around one of his friend's wives, who loves mothering, hoping that this other woman will rub off on Marin. Nothing is working. Justin is at war with what is. He's in total resistance to reality. What is it that Justin is not accepting? He's not accepting that Marin does not want to be a mother. And he's also not accepting that it doesn't matter what he thinks is right. Marin will not discipline herself for the next 16 years against her own desires and against her own happiness to be a good mother anyway because of a sense of moral obligation. Justin is trying to get something that is unworkable to be workable. Justin finally realizing what he is not accepting and finally accepting it is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. But once he does, all his futile efforts stop. He realizes that any change he makes to the situation must accommodate for this truth. Instead of spending the rest of his life trying to get Marin to be a good mother, he decides that he has a few options. One is to involve his own mother or Marin's mother in the child care on a daily basis. One is to put his kids in daycare. One is to flip roles with Marin so she's the one working and he's the one at home with the kids. One is to divorce her and to take full custody of the children 
and to look for a good stepmother for the kids. Though all of these options are not what he would have hoped, they all would bring him some kind of much-needed forward movement that was impossible to bring about the way he was trying to bring it about before. Because what Justin has always wanted is a life where he works and his wife, who, by the way, loves being a mother, is home with the kids, Justin decides that he is going to get a divorce, and he persuades Marin to give him full custody of the children. With this, he promises her that she can arrange to spend supervised time with the kids whenever she asks. And what does he do now? He sets out to find a new wife and mother for his kids and the kids he plans to have in the future. Briggs has a habit of agreeing to do things and canceling last minute or just not showing up. For years, people have been getting really mad about it. In his social circles, he feels the tension of everyone resenting and not respecting him, and no one dates him for longer than a month, quite frankly, because of this tendency. The bottom line is, he's flaky. And he always has an excuse for why he's flaky. But he can't seem to stop the behavior no matter what he does. He attends motivational seminars about responsibility and masculinity. He does shadow work to find out why he is doing it, in the hopes that doing so might somehow just cause him to stop. Through this process, he discovers some things. He discovers that if he makes future plans, he never knows how he's going to feel on that day or at that time. And he can't stand that feeling of forcing himself to do something despite feeling like he would rather be doing something else at that time. Briggs has trauma around being forced to do things that his mother decided he would do despite how he felt, but Briggs is at war with this aspect of himself. He does everything he can think of to change it, but nothing has worked. He can't discipline himself. Briggs is at war with what is. He is in resistance to the truth of himself. Despite all of his effort, Briggs hasn't actually fully accepted that he's flaky, as you can see because he always has an excuse for why he doesn't follow through on plans. He also hasn't accepted that he doesn't want to be reliable, and he doesn't want to have to follow through on plans that he has made, when doing so would feel worse than doing something else. Briggs just keeps on trying to change something that he doesn't actually want to change about himself. When he looks at it, all he really wants to have change is the way that people act towards him as a result of him doing this. And he feels the only way to do that is to show up even if he doesn't feel like it. Briggs finally realizing what he is not accepting and finally accepting it is both scary and relieving. But once he does, all his futile efforts, they just stop. He realizes that any change he makes to the situation must accommodate for the fact that he doesn't actually want to have to follow through on plans he made, when doing so would feel worse than doing something else. He realizes that accepting this truth about himself means that he will have to change the way he does things with people. Instead of trying to force himself to follow through, he decides to stop guaranteeing that he will follow through. He's going to stop guaranteeing that he will show up somewhere when he's invited. He decides he wants to live according to his value of spontaneity, according to how he feels rather than plan out his days or weeks. He thinks this would actually be healing. He lets friends who can't handle this drift away, and keeps friends who don't seem to depend on him regarding what he is doing or not doing, and who seem fine to spend time together whenever the stars align. Briggs uses shadow work to face and resolve his resistance to the consequences of making this choice. After all, there are some things you can't do and can't have if you can't follow through on commitments. Though there are some downsides to accepting this truth about himself, and to making changes accordingly, he feels so much relief. Why? Because he's no longer trying to effort himself against himself to do what he doesn't want to do. And his life has improved. He says he feels in the flow. He doesn't know whether he might change his mind about committing to following through in the future, but he feels like what he is doing is very healing for him right now. There's always a reason why we don't want to accept something. We're convinced that accepting that thing will bring about something unwanted or put us face to face with something we feel we can't handle. For example, using our previous examples, subconsciously Justin was refusing to accept that Marin didn't want kids because to him it would mean that the way he felt about her was not an indication that their relationship would work out. And that means he can't trust the way he feels towards a woman. Also, he feels it would mean that he made the wrong choices in his life. Now, that's embarrassing. It would also cause him to come face to face with the very thing he vowed for his entire life to never do, which is divorce. It also meant that despite all his efforts, his kids would have emotional problems, no matter what in life, because of their difficult relationship with Marin. And guess what? He could not do anything to prevent that. 
It also meant that the dream that he had built for their life together would go up in smoke. Justin didn't feel like he could deal with the emotions that that experience would bring up within him. And, subconsciously, Briggs was refusing to accept that he's flaky and accept that the root of his flakiness is that he doesn't want to be reliable and doesn't want to have to follow through on plans he made when doing so would feel worse than doing something else. He was doing this because to him it meant that he is all those things that people think about him when he flakes on them. He is pathetic. He is immature. He is weak. He does lack self-discipline. Also, he would have to face and choose and own the consequences of not following through on plans. One of these things being the loss of certain friends, and another being that he would have to find a way to make money on his own time, rather than stepping into a, let's call it prestigious job, where he is required to show up on a schedule. And with this came facing the disapproval of his status-driven mother. Accepting what is is not easy, especially when it comes to accepting whatever it is that we are not accepting currently. In fact, it may just be one of the most painful things you ever experience. When you won't accept something, it is because of what it would mean and what you don't trust yourself to be able to face and deal with, which is why it is so important to ask yourself, if I were to accept, fill in the blank with something you're terrified to accept, why would that be so bad or what would it mean? Even though it is so hard to do, accepting the truth that you are not accepting is the game changer that you are looking for. Despite how bad it hurts, it will get you unstuck. It will change what you decide to do. It will make it so that any action you take is so squarely in reality that it will bring about actual results and actual movement towards improvement. In any given situation, there may be one big thing you're not accepting or there may be multiple things you aren't accepting. Usually, you know in your heart what it is you aren't accepting. It's that reality that you keep trying to push down and reject and deny and change and talk yourself out of, and avoid, and disprove. It's a thing you don't want to have be the reality, even though it keeps haunting you from the inside. But it is always an option, if you can't put your finger on what you aren't accepting, to involve other people. For example, to involve other experts and or other friends, and to ask them what it is that they think or they feel that you are not accepting. Staying stuck in pain because of what you're not accepting is a terrible way to spend your life. For this reason, you would benefit by watching five of my other videos in addition to this one. The first being reality. The second being why you should know and accept the truth even if it hurts. The third being the truth about accepting someone for who they are. The fourth being are you pushing against the past. And the fifth being the secret to overcoming your problems, which is about the process of exaltation. I'm going to finish this video by saying it again. When it feels like you are at war with what is, you are not accepting something, the question for you to ask yourself is, what am I not accepting? Have a good week. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and consider sharing this video with your friends. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified of the next time that I post a video. I want to thank you personally for the bravery that you have to step into awareness. I'll see you in the next video.